Um, this individual is also a senior liberal campaign strategist, and that organization, Data Sciences, has been um, a, an integral part, um, as publicly reported, uh, of the Liberal Party of Canada's electoral uh, campaigns and their voter contact database, known as Liberalist. So it helps with things like digital engagement uh, for its campaigns. And um, further, uh, NGP Van is a company the Liberal Party of Canada licenses to run their political database. NGP Van, um, NGP Van uh, and Data Sciences are reported um, by uh, the folks who've been contacted by the Globe and Mail to do the same thing. And we heard, uh, we've seen the, the contract between Liberal members and uh, that have signed and with NGP Van. And we've, we know that Data Sciences is being contracted by Liberal members. The rationale for the contract with Data Sciences, uh, once given by the company, is that it provides technical support for the services provided by NGP Van. The problem with that is that the contract that was that was published in the Globe and Mail details the service level agreement, including technical support for their own software, which raises the question, what is data science sciences doing for the liberal members? What what are they getting from this contract? When asked, some members of the Liberal Caucus, uh, they they responded, and uh, and I'll refer to a June twenty first Globe and Mail article, and it was titled "Liberal MPs Budgets Pay Same Firms That Help Run Parties Digital Campaigns." The article reads in part: Mr. Easter, the member from Alpac, was unable to explain what data sciences did for his office in managing social media. "Quote: I do my own," he said. "Quote: I quite honestly don't know what data sciences does." Quote, he added. Liberal MP John McKay also said he had no idea why money from his office budget was going to Mr. Pitfield's company. Quote, I haven't got a clue, he said. Quote, I can't explain it. I vaguely recall once a year we write a check and it's always been explained that it is within the ethical guidelines. So we all kind of sign up for it and it goes into some oblivion, end quote. So the concern as it relates to this committee uh, chair is that this places some members of the, of the government, of the Liberal Caucus, in a conflict of interest based on their relationship with Mr. Pitfield. We have individuals who have personal friendships with public office holders. They're then given contracts by those public office holders. And what's more is those those individuals, in this case, a minister, is in a position to direct or coordinate other members to retain those services for the purposes that the members are unclear about. So certainly in the context of uh, our fiduciary responsibility in managing the funds that are entrusted to us as members in the in the exercise of our role as members of parliament and in uh, dispensing funds from what we know as our MOB, our members, uh, our members budget. It's important that we, that we first of all, understand why, why we're retaining the services of others. And I think it's important for Canadians to understand that um, when, when signing contracts, that's not something a member can delegate. Members have to personally sign and authorize those contracts. So there needs to be uh, an understanding um, uh, and certainly a, a basic awareness of what that contract is for. That's exercising a basic fiduciary responsibility. And when there is all of this context of those personal relationships, of that connection to a political organization, and, and when in these contracts it's very clear that there's an exclusivity that the company will only deal with members of one political affiliation, in this case, liberal members, it raises all kinds of questions. The functionality of the software also raises questions about being able to engage in very specific uh, voter, uh, voter, act, voter 
um, related activities. So it's for those reasons that we initiated um, the call for this meeting. And it's, it's very important when there seems to be an, an inevitable election coming this summer. Um, and and I, I, welcome, uh, I, I welcome the Prime Minister to, to, to prove uh, the speculators wrong on that, um, because now is not the time for an election. I think it's important that we understand whether or not there has been taxpayer money from members' budgets being used to subsidize the political operations of a political party in Canada. That's, that's very important that we know that there's been no uh, misappropriation of that money and that we understand that there's been no conflicts of interest in members' members' exercise of their duties, in ministers' exercise of their duties, and, uh, and that's what brings us here today. So with that said, Chair, I'd like to move the following motion, that pursuant to Standing Order 1083, sub H, sub 7, and in light of recent media reports, the committee undertake a study on conflicts of interest relating to taxpayer-funded contracts with Data Sciences, Inc., and that the committee do invite Mr. Tom Pitfield to appear and testify before the committee at a time and date of the chair's choosing and no later than seven days following the adoption of this motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, motion is available in um, both official languages in uh, paper format and it's been provided in electronic format uh, to the clerk. So whatever um, your comfort or member's comfort is with receiving that um, in paper. And um, once that's been distributed, I just have um, a few final comments before um, before other members speak to or against uh, 